Hi, I'm Josh Liparati, a product manager here at Microsoft inside of our Microsoft 365 customer advocacy team. Hello, I'm Tiffany Lee. I'm also a product manager on the same team as Josh here at Microsoft in the Microsoft 365 customer advocacy team. We are excited today to highlight the Teams Emergency Operations Center and talk about the solution and do a quick demo for you. Now you can find out more about the solution and deploy it by visiting aka.ms slash m365tioc. The Microsoft Teams Emergency Operations Center solution template leverages the power of the Microsoft 365 platform to centralize incident response, information sharing, and field communications using powerful services like Microsoft List, SharePoint, and more. It's an open source solution supported by Microsoft and it provides core functionality out of the box or can be extended to meet agency requirements. Let's talk about some of the core features of Teams Emergency Operations Center. One of the biggest things for us is supportability. So inside of our Microsoft 365 government environments, we now support the Government Community Cloud, GCC, the Government Community Cloud High, GCC High, and Azure Government Deployment Environments for Teams Emergency Operations Center. In addition, you have a centralized incident view where you're able to create and respond to incidents fast and through a centralized location. You're able to allow your staff to maintain situational awareness. Next, dashboard view. Within this, we have our newest feature called Map Viewer, where you're able to have location aware incidents now and enabling Bing addresses and Map View of incidents from the main dashboard. You can see the status of all your incidents live on the Map View. Now, as we think about that, we also have extended assets where you can go and create private channels, unique channel names, and other unique assets that can tie to the default incident types that you pick. So you can customize this for your deployments. Next, you can create unique role assignments per incident. Now with this, with unique role assignments, you're able to automatically trigger tag creation for easy and structured communication. Next, we have our Active Dashboard View. Active Dashboard View is a central point for viewing and identifying role assignments and sending announcements to the team. It provides ability to start and stop Teams meetings for bridge calls, as well as the ability to centralize, manage, assign, and act on tasks for an incident. Now, these are some of the core features available, but there are much, much more. Let's jump into the demo of the Teams Emergency Operations Center. Now here, we're centered on our dashboard where I can see a couple of key elements. I can see all of my active incidents, whether they're in different stages like planning, active, or closed. I can also sort through those. I can sort and change the order of any of the incident types through the dashboard. I've got a central search and a lot of other features that we're gonna jump into in a moment. But there's a brand new feature, Tiffany, that I think we should show. Yeah. So let's jump into the map viewer view. Within map viewer, if you enable it, it enables Bing maps as well as uh, Bing addresses. Uh, within this, we have a view of um, our demo environment in Louisiana, where you can see our environments and our incidents in their various statuses, such as active, planning, and closed. Yeah, this is a huge requested feature, so glad we've got this now. Now, the big thing that you'll do when you come to Teams Emergency Operations Center is you'll wanna make an incident. So let me talk through what you're seeing real quick and then we'll fill this out. So the first thing is I've got some details that I'm gonna add in that's about my incident. I'm gonna go and create an assign role assignment so that I can assign my responders to this incident. And then I've got the unique assets like the channel names and guest users that maybe I'm adding into this. This is the key area inside of Teams Emergency Operations Center where you're gonna be making the incident, making the team for the response individuals. So you can see here, we've got our information filled out for this incident. Now there's a few key things when we think about filling out our incident form. When we see drop downs, we have information that you can go and customize. All of this is stored in a list that you can go change and modify so that your agency and organization is represented correctly with the types of incidents that you respond to. That applies to incident types and our incident statuses here, as well as when I get into role assignments and the roles that are available, I can go customize these roles to be unique for my organization. So this has been filled out. We've got all of our data for it. I've got my members assigned to the team and I have my assets created. Here, I've got my standard channels. I've got some folks assigned into the private channel. I can go modify that. But once we're done here, we're gonna go and click create new incident. And in the background, a new team is gonna get created and these assets loaded into it. Now that we've created our incident, let's take a look at all the actions that we can do to our incident. First, our incident history. 
So this is an activity log of all the different updates that's been made to your incident, including the creation event, updates such as changing the severity, different uh, added members. Now, in addition, we're also able to do uh, the download PDF function where you can download a PDF of your incident history for reporting purposes. Our next action is looking at the active dashboard for each incident. So when I look in this view, I'm specifically seeing my team roster. It's associated for this incident where I can get rich information about the contacts, post announcements and add new members here. The next area is our active bridge area. This allows me to quickly create a Teams meeting bridge where I can invite all of my team members into a call to have active incident communications happen in a central location. Finally, we've also got centralized task management. This integrates with Planner so that the team has a single place to go and create, curate, and respond to tasks associated for this incident. We were excited to share this overview of the Teams Emergency Operations Center with you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Please visit aka.ms slash M365TEOC to download the solution, read the FAQ, and find out more.